Hello everyone, welcome back to our DGP 40 hands on lab. In today's demonstration, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the BGP route map. In one of the past demonstrations, we had took a quick look at the BGP route map. The BGP route map is used for filtering is a very very powerful concept and the great thing about the route map and you can think of a you know it gives you a paradigm of programming construct so just like if you are familiar with any kind of programming language you have like if else then continue a break that kind of concept there is a similar thing that we can go ahead and do with the route map route map also has you know route map is quite like powerful we can go ahead and you know match certain things we can go ahead and match multiple things and if there is a match, we can go ahead and take certain actions. Also, we can say if you match this, go somewhere else or, you know, continue further. We can go ahead and, you know, configure multiple match statements. So that would act as like an end statement. If you go ahead and configure those match on the same line, that would act as a, like an or, or expression. So the route map is a very, very powerful concept. And, you know, another great advantage with the route maps, you can be very selective. And you know this is again another very powerful filtering mechanism in the BGP if you want to do any kind of filtering on your BGP tables. And we had touched based on this one previously also that a route map can match the route based on a lot of BGP attributes. Something like local preference, community, weight, the origin and next stop. We can also go ahead and configure prefix list and access list where we can go ahead and start matching the ip prefixes the another thing about this one we can not we can just go we can go ahead and you know take those network and we can also change the behavior you know hey let's say if you match this thing i want to go ahead and change something so we had talked about some of some of these things with the help of the construct match and set we can go ahead and use multiple match statements within a route map we can go ahead and use multiple set statement within a route map we can also use another powerful construct which is like the continue uh, in your route map scenario so the route map is very very powerful and i don't think so even this demonstration will be able to cover every single thing so i would strongly suggest you that you spend good quality time learning about the route map and you know try doing certain different variations or the scenarios that way you can go ahead and really understand the power that the route map really provides you for this demonstration for the bgp uh, you know the route map we'll be staying with our smaller topology of those three router the router isp1 router isp2 and router r2 so in this case we know that router r2 is our middle router which is connected with the two isps isp1 and isp2 so think of an isp1 and isp2 are actual isps where our router 2 act is going to act as a customer in this case so our customer router r2 is connected with two isps and for this demonstration now, because we are connected with two ISPs, we are exchanging certain routes from ISP1 back to router R2, as well as from ISP22 back to router R2. And now these ISPs, we are using them primarily to go outside our organization or to reach other areas, simply called, let's say, internet. Now, both of these ISPs are also be advertising a default route towards the R2. Now, there are two default routes that are coming that are being received by router r2 which is a customer one from your isp1 and another from your isp2 so in this demonstration we're going to treat isp1 as our primary isp and isp2 as our second year backup isp so when we are receiving these two default route we want to use the route coming from isp1 as our default route to go outside so we would use isp1 to go outside the you know or use isp1 as in our internet service provider so with that we're going to go ahead and explore you know this these route filters and we're again going to go ahead and experiment with some of these route filters so let's come to isp1 and let's quickly take a look at the what are the routes this isp1 router is advertising towards the router r2 so again the command should be familiar to you guys 172 16 12 2 and we are interested in looking at the advertiser so we, we could see that okay hey, these are the ip prefixes that this isp router is advertising but if you also take a look at this isp1 is also originating a default network of 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0 so we could see that this isp1 router is originating a default route now let's go ahead and take a look at on the isp2 and see what are the different prefixes the isp2 router is also advertising towards router r2 so ip bgp again the neighbor would be 172 16 22.2 22 
and we are interested in looking at the advertised route. So this router, our ISP2, is advertising 12 I, you know, IP prefix, as well as it is also advertising a default network. So we could see from this output and result that ISP2 router is also originating a default route. Now that means the ISP1 and ISP2, they both are originating a default network of 0.0.0. .0. So now if we go back to router R2, we should be seeing two, you know, default route or default network of 0, 0, 0. being advertised by both ISP1 and ISP2. So let's go ahead and take a look at on the RAR R2. So we can go ahead and simply take a look at our BGP table, show IP BGP. And if you take a look at the BGP table, we could see here are the those two prefixes. One is coming from the AS100, another is coming from AS200. And we could see our default network or default route here. So now the RAR R2 is really receiving these two default routes from two different eBGP neighbors. One is com coming from your ISP1, another one is coming from your ISP2. So now we just want to be receiving. And there is another thing that, you know, uh, I want to show you that. Apart from uh, not, we are not just receiving the default routes from these neighbors. We are also receiving a couple more prefixes, IP prefixes. So if you can see, there are quite a, a bunch of you know, IP prefixes that we are receiving from ISP1. There are quite a bunch of prefixes we are receiving from ISP2. But if you take a look at it, as I indicated, that these ISPs are, we are going to use them just only for internet purpose. That means we will be using these to go outside. So that means we are not interested in receiving any of these other prefixes from, uh, let's say, the ISP1 in that particular case because we are treating ISP1 as our primary ISP. So from the ISP1, we are only interested in receiving a default route or a default network of 0.0.0, .0 but not the any other prefixes. So we will be using the route map to filter only the, uh, the default route, and we would be just simply denying all the other prefixes that we are receiving from ISP1. And as you can see right now, R2 is using ISP1 as the preferred and valid uh, at the moment, basically. So we are only interested in keeping this particular IP prefix or this particular default route, which is coming from ISP1 and not the other prefixes. So we can go ahead and make use of the route map again to go ahead and start doing the filtering. And if you recall from the previous demonstration, the I, the route map really makes use of a prefix list. So we will be configuring a prefix list that we will be calling inside a route map. There we will be using the concept of match and set. Set again if you want to change something. Uh, for this demonstration, we are not really changing anything. We are using the route map just for the filtering purpose where we are going to just go ahead and match certain things. And we do not want to change any other attribute. So with that, let's go ahead and configure our IP prefix list. And we can just simply say uh, whatever is the name. Uh, we could just say from ISP1. From ISP1. And we can go ahead and say, hey, what do we want to do? Do we want to permit or deny? There are multiple prefixes that we are receiving. So I think we better off using a permit just only for this particular prefix instead of using multiple deny statement to deny all of these other uh, IP prefixes. So we are interested in permitting and we are interested in permitting this particular. So that would be, and you know, this is a prefix, so we need to go ahead and specify a zero. So what we just did, we went ahead and created an IP prefix list. And in that prefix list, we are permitting 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0, which happens to be the default route. Now, once this IP prefix list is configured, we can go ahead and call or we can go ahead and use or reference this IP prefix list inside our route map. So let's go ahead and create a route map. And we can say this route map is for ISP1 because as we indicated, we want to apply this route map uh, to our neighbor ISP1. And again, what do we want to do? We want to permit and then we need to provide a sequence number. Then we are interested in matching and the match would be based on IP address and that IP address comes from the prefix list and name of the prefix list. This is the name of the prefix list that we went ahead and configured earlier. And again, we are only matching. We are not doing any kind of a set. 
So what we went ahead and did, we created an IP prefix list. We are, we are matching this particular IP prefix. And we just went ahead and created a route map. Inside this route map, we have referenced this prefix list. Now the route map is ready. Again, these route map, as we did previously, these route maps are applied at a per neighbor level. So that means now we need to go inside our RAR BGP process. And we need to go ahead and apply this route map onto the neighbor our isp1 so 172 16 12 11 and the route map that we are going to go ahead and apply is the name of this route map is for isp1 and in what direction we want to be applying so now when the routes are being received we want to apply this in the inbound direction or incoming direction so we'll go ahead and simply say in and that'll be all pretty much now if at this stage if i go ahead and you know start doing a debug on the bgp and clear my bgp session that would reinforce you know for the re-establishment of bgp and if we take a look at after that we let's quickly take a look at right now so ip bgp currently we do have all of these things because as we know earlier we just went ahead and applied this route map so it won't be you know getting applied to the existing one if you want to apply on the existing one we will need to go ahead and say clear ip bgp start give it a couple seconds and now the bgp neighbor went down and bgp neighbor came back up and it's going to take a few more seconds to converge let's continue to take a look at our ip tool. and boom now you can see there is only one prefix that we are receiving from 11 and which happens to be our default network and rest of the prefixes from isp1 are being dropped and we went ahead and achieved that this would be help of the route map again a route map is a very very powerful concept guys and i would highly encourage you read it more on this one and you know try practicing different scenarios we did one previous hands-on and now this is another one and this is just a glimpse again you know you could use multiple match statement within a route map you can go ahead and do multiple set operations within a route map you can go ahead and make use of the continue construct so you can go ahead and simply create multiple route maps and you can say okay hey if there is one matches after this you can take certain actions you know maybe you don't want to use the route member of two maybe you want to go directly to route map three so that's where where you can go ahead and give a continue with a particular sequence number let's say you want to go to the third one or the fourth or fifth and so on so there are a lot of powerful construct or concepts inside or you know related with the route map so i would highly encourage you you know read more on this route map and go ahead and you know, practice a lot more on the route map but that'll be all for this quick demonstration where we just went ahead and saw again the quick power of a route map we created an access prefix list then we went ahead and created a route map and we referenced this prefix list inside our route map and then later on we reference this route map towards our neighbor that means uh, with the help of route map we are doing filtering and this is another way of uh, doing a filter so we are just doing filtering we are not changing any of the attributes because we have not used any set commands in this case but if you wanted to match and you know change something yes you can go ahead and make use of the uh, route maps set operation also That'll be all for this demonstration. I will see you next time. Thank you.